Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. Um, we're going to get into another fight on the Benavides Andrade card. Uh, we're going to get into uh, Charlo versus Benavides. Not the Charlo versus Benavides that we would want. Jamel Charlo versus Benavides makes a little bit of sense. Jamal Charlo versus uh, David Benavides makes a ton of sense. But no, we're not getting that. We're getting Jam Jamal Charlo uh, versus Jose Benavides Jr. Um, we'll get into it. Uh, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog on all forms of social media. Quick hits come to uh, – <clears throat> I'm sorry. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight. Uh, we're going to break it all down for you uh, and give you all the uh, – we're going to show you how to make a, a second source of income on boxing. Um, the odds makers, the bookie, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to make – they don't know how to set odds on boxing. Uh, we're going to show you how to bring down the house. And, again, I don't gamble. I use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in Texas. Um, but if you do gamble, I'm going to show you how to make a, a, a consistent income, show you how to bring down the house and consistently make money on boxing because we know what we're doing and the odds makers do not. All right, let's get into the show. Um, so it's going to be the first fight for uh, David, not David Benavides, for Jamal Charlo in a, a year and a half almost. Um, he last fought in June of 2021. We are now in November of 2023. He hasn't been stripped of his title, so this is somehow a world title fight. Um, it's going to be good to see Charlo back. I, I was really, really high on Jamal Charlo before he took a two and a half year maternity leave. Um, but he's back. Um, and He's fighting Jose Benavides, which really doesn't make any sense, but I, I guess you don't want to match him too tough in a fight where Charlo has him fought in two years. I, Benavides isn't a pushover. He's just fighting out of his weight class, um, and he's never really beaten a top name to think he deserves this fight. Um, so, so let's start with Benavides. I'm not a huge Jose Benavides fan. He fought competitively you know, um, with Terrence Crawford. Um, in, in, in Crawford's welterweight run, Benavides probably offered the best challenge outside of Sean Porter. He did better than Spence. He did better than Cal Brook or Khan or Mean Machine, right? He did better than those guys. He did. He, he won a couple rounds, probably won two, three rounds in a fight, probably two. Um, you know, he's tall, but he won't be tall for he, – he won't be tall for – 60, right? Like, so what makes him effective is he's tall and rangy and he knows how to use his height and reach. He's not going to have the height and reach advantage. He's going to be a, the shorter man in the ring. Um, it's just the fight's all, all wrong for him. Um, I don't know if Charlo can stop him. Um, Charlo's last five fights or so, all of them, but except for Dennis Hogan, have gone the distance. So he, he goes the distance now. Um, I Benavides doesn't throw it in a ton of combination. He doesn't have high volume at all. Um, he, he's mostly one shot at a time. Um, he, he seems to have gotten some of his speed back, you know, after he got shot in the leg and in, in a Crawford fight. He didn't look like he had his speed, but he seemed to have a little bit of speed back in the Danny Garcia fight. Um, but it, it's one shot at a time. He doesn't have uh, much power, right? He's, he's not his brother. Um, he's got skills. It's just like there's nothing really. This guy was a really, really talented prospect coming up. You know, he's supposed to be a phenom, supposed to win world titles. I don't know how much of it had to do with the, with the injury, but I don't see it in him. You know, he, he's come up well short in, in his fights. Um, he came up, he came closer with, with Benavidez than he did with Danny Garcia. Uh, you know, when he fought Danny Garcia, and this is about a year and a half ago, July 2022, I. He, one of the judges had it even in that fight. Amazing. Um, I, I had an eight to four and nine to three. So I, I guess it was similar to the Crawford fight. Uh, he's taken one fight since then. He's been out of the ring. Uh, he was out of the ring for about a year. And he fought a guy that was 36 and 15. Uh, and he got the uh, stoppage there. That was in August. Um, but you go through his resume. Um, and, and still, to this day, 
the best win on his resume is 2016 uh, Francisco Santana and 2014 Mauricio Herrera, right? So this guy was uh, was on the take coming up, um, really touted a prospect that never really panned out. Maybe we can blame it on on the shooting, um, but again, uh, how does being shot in the leg make you not throw punches? How does it make? I mean, he doesn't have a ton of power. Um, He's not defensively that savvy. I, I got to go back and watch the Herrera fight and see what made him special because it's just not there anymore. And Charlo is is, is the constant. He's the perfect. He's the kind of ideal boxer puncher. Um, he's off the front foot a lot. He can box off the back foot. He looks a little uncomfortable doing it at times, but he can do it. Uh, he, he prefers to be off the front foot. He's coming. He, he he jabs. He sets up his shots. His left hook, I think, is his best shot. He's got a really good left hook. Um, I don't think he's a great finisher. I think he gets a little sloppy, a little overexcited, um, and, and he misses a lot of shots. But he's got good pop. He's got decent speed, right? He's a good athlete. He's physically strong. Um, he can walk you down, uh, He and, and he and he will do that. He's going to walk Benavides down. I think he can stop Benavides, but we, we don't know because there's going to be a lot of ring rush. He hasn't fought in two in a year. He mixes up his, his head and body shots really well. His footwork is good. You know, he's not hyper, hyper athletic, uh, but he's a good athlete. And, he, you know, whoever taught him to fight, him and his brother really, really well, right? Like his mechanics are good. Um, he, he knows how to fight. He knows how to use his jab. He knows how to set things up. Um, he can fight in, in, in at all three ranges. Like, he's just good. And, and, and you know, he, he's, he's, he's good on the inside. He, and it's just he gets a little sloppy, a little, a little over aggressive when he's going for the kill. Um, he closes distance extremely well. You'll see him. You'll see him do things. He jabs on a half beat, right? Like he does a lot of good things. Like he's he's got a high ring IQ. He's a good fighter. Uh, he really knows his craft. Um, he faints really well. He uses his feints well. Uh, I just think like this is going to be we, there's going to be ring rust, I would think. Uh, but you know how much is there? And is it going to make a difference? I ultimately don't think so. But I, I just think even if they were the same size, right? And and they're not. Benavides is probably best at 54, 47, and Charlo can probably go to 68. Like there's going to be a noticeable size difference. But even if they were the same size. Um, if this was Charlo back at 154 when he was a giant 154, Charlo's still a much better fighter. He's better, he's a bigger hitter, he's better skills, right? Better ring IQ, more tools in his toolbox. So I don't see this fight going well. Um, I don't see this fight going well for Benavides Jr. I, I think it's a pretty dominant fight. I'm going to show you the odds. They don't have any props on this on DraftKings. Again, we always use DraftKings. I like the odds. Um, but we're going to show you. All it is is minus 1,000 and plus 550 for Benavides. There's only a money line on this fight, so it's an obvious bet. Uh, we're going to make a two-times bet on Charlo because it's that easy of a fight. We want to make some money on it. I'm actually glad they don't have a prop on this because I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I'd pick him to stop him. He hasn't got a ton of stoppages, and he's got the ring rust. But without the ring rust, he definitely stops Benavides. I just don't know. I, I want to see what he looks like. Uh, it's been two and a half years out of the ring. Uh, he's 33 now, I believe. So it's just, you know, there's a lot working against him. None of it's ultimately going to matter. He's going to dominate this fight. Uh, a two-times bet, you know. Not going to make you a ton of money, uh, but again, it's chip away, chip away. You know, um, you know, we, we take some risks on, on, on fights with, with, with big time odds like Eddie Vasquez and things like that, and can say style. Um, and when we lose, you, you got to add add up your wins, right? So you got to get these little wins, get these little wins, get these little wins. And Charlo's definitely going to win this fight. So I, I, whatever you typically bet, I double it. Um, lock it in. I know FanDuel has much better odds on this. I'm not telling anyone to go to FanDuel. I'm just putting that out there. FanDuel has, it was, I think it was minus 670. The spread on this, minus 1,000 and plus 500. Hey, oh, really? The, 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 the bookie here is really juicy. Let me tell you, uh, that spread is way too big. You know, honestly, uh, you know, 
Benavides is not going to win this fight. If I, if, if I would make a book on this, I'd make Charlo minus 850 and, and Benavides plus, you know, 625. Close that spread a little bit. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. I, there's not a lot here. We're not going to make a killing, but we're absolutely going to make money on this fight. Uh, it's Charlo in a wash. Don't mess with Texas. It's uh, November 22nd, 2023 from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.